How long do the effects of a drug such as caffeine or aspirin last in your body? In this lesson, you will learn how to graph exponential and logarithmic functions with a stretch or reflection by considering how caffeine effects are felt in the body. An exponential function is a function of the form y equals b to the x. All exponential functions in this form have the same y-intercept and horizontal asymptote. If b is greater than 1, the graph is exponential growth. If b is between 0 and 1, it is exponential decay. A logarithmic function is a function of the form log base b of x. The general characteristics of the graph include a vertical asymptote at x equals 0 and an x-intercept at 1, 0. Both families of graphs can be translated vertically k units or horizontally by h units. This is the basic exponential model with translations. Regardless of the base, this would be the same shift. This is y equals 3 to the x shifted right 3 and down 1. Here is the basic logarithmic translated form. Regardless of the base, this would take the parent function graph left 2 and up 1. Let's check out the graph of the logarithm. Here is the logarithmic example. In blue we see the parent function y equals log base 3 of x. This translates left 2 and up 1 and gives us the graph of the example. Shifts are called rigid transformations because they are rigid like a brick. They shift without changing shape. If caffeine decreases in your body by about 12% per hour, the equation y equals 0.88 to the x gives the percent left x hours after it was introduced. This is a basic exponential decay model. But it wouldn't show the amount of caffeine in the body, just the percent left. How can we change the model to show the difference between drinking 12 cans of soda and 1 can of soda? Please, don't drink 12 cans of soda. Let's take a look at our percent remaining graph. The point 2, comma 0.77 would indicate only 77% remains after 2 hours. So if we took an initial quantity times the percent left, it would give us the quantity of caffeine left after x hours. So to get our new model, we just multiply by the amount of caffeine in a soda, which is 50 milligrams. But what's that going to do to our graph? If we take a basic exponential function and multiply it by some real number a, or 2 in this example, the points on the new graph have a y-coordinate which are 2 times the old y-coordinate. If we multiply all y-values by 2, the graph will be stretched 2 times higher. But what if a is less than 1? Watch the graph as I change a. If a is 1 half, all of the y-coordinates of the parent function become half the original height. Now 1 fourth and 1 tenth as much as the parent function. As the value of a gets smaller, the function is compressed vertically. Let's see what happens if a is a negative. If we begin with negative 1, we see that the graph has been reflected. This is because all y values are opposite of the parent function. Notice how the point 2, 4 has been reflected to 2, negative 4. Watch the effect of changing this to negative 3. With any negative a, it has been reflected over the x-axis, but the 3 stretches it vertically. So it's really the absolute value of a which gives the vertical stretch factor. The characteristics we have just seen with exponential functions also apply to the graphs of logarithms. If the absolute value of a is greater than 1, the graph is stretched vertically. If a is between 0 and 1, the graph is compressed vertically. And if a is negative, the graph is reflected vertically. Starting with a vertical stretch, we see the parent function is natural log of x. When we multiply the model by 3, each y is three times that of the parent function. Notice the vertical asymptote doesn't change. With a vertical compression, let's start with log base 2 in blue. 
As the value of A gets smaller, visually you can see it really is compressed vertically. Let's see a reflection. We start with the parent function, reflected vertically with a negative 1. This takes each y value of the parent function and makes it opposite. Finally, this graph is reflected with a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. Now we are ready to go back and fix our caffeine graph. Graph the amount of caffeine in the body for x hours after consumption of one soda. First, think about the parent function. This is exponential decay. Next, think about the vertical stretch by a factor of 50. We can plot a few points to increase our accuracy and draw a smooth curve. If this is one soda, 12 would definitely be a bad idea. It is easy to get confused when the functions don't fit one of our standard forms. When you are asked to graph one of these, think about the standard form and make it your goal. Reorganize the terms to fit first. Notice the exponent, factor out any coefficient of x, and use properties of exponents to rewrite the base. In summary, identify the parent function and its key characteristics. Consider the effects of any transformations. Plot a few points to increase your accuracy, and draw a smooth curve through the points approaching the asymptote. In this lesson, you have learned how to graph exponential and logarithmic functions with a stretch or reflection by considering how caffeine effects are felt in the body.